physicist and cosmologist Brian Cox has discovered how to stop time. This has to do with time travel. He says, I can stroll in eternal twilight. Callum Hoare of Express UK reports, Brian Cox pointed out a location in our solar system where it's possible to make time stop still. This is what he revealed during his new BBC series. And he explains, Dr. Cox raised this brilliant point during BBC Point shows the planets. Mercury, the smallest and innermost planet in the solar system with an orbital period around the sun of 88 Earth days, the planet is locked with the sun in what is known as a spin orbit resonance and rotates on its axis exactly three times for every two revolution it makes. This means that from the viewpoint of someone on Mercury, one day would actually be as long as two Mercurian years. Anyway, Dr. Cox raised this brilliant point during BBC show Pla Planets, explained that if you were to drop someone off at a point on Mercury and return after the planet made a full orbit of the Sun, a day from their perspective still would not have passed. He told viewers on May 28th, Mercury is a world of mystery and apparent contradictions. It's quite an elliptical orbit, which means it can be as far away from the Sun as 11 million kilometers, that's 43 million miles, but as close as 46 million kilometers, that's 28 million miles. This means that temperatures at midday can rise to 430 degrees Celsius on the surface, but at night, because it's a, great, a small planet and it's got, to, uh, it got no atmosphere, the temperature falls to 170 Celsius minus, minus 170 Celsius. It's also locked into what's called the spin orbit resonance. Dr. Cox went on to detail, if he was to slowly walk across the planet, keeping the sun at the same point, he would have technically stopped time as the day would never pass. And he said, this means the planet spins precisely three times on its axis for every two orbits. And that in turn means that by this day, uh, means that uh, it stays twice as long as the year. The day is twice as long as the year. It means that I could walk over the surface like this at about two miles per hour and keep the sun at the same point in the, in the sky. I could stroll in eternal twilight, he says. This means that if Dr. Cox was to travel across the planet faster than it could spin on its axis, he would theoretically be traveling back in time. It's not the first time the English professor, Brian Cox, has put forward the idea of time travel. He previously explained why Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity is key in understanding how we could t travel back in time. Well, he developed this idea that space and time are really aspects of the same thing, space-time. Special relativity says that something unique happens when you move through space-time, especially when your speed relative to other objects is close to the speed of light, of course, and time goes slower for you than for the people you left behind. So you won't notice this effect until you return to those stationary people. Dr. Cox demonstrated the idea during his BBC Doctor Who special, using a member of the audience for help, Professor Jim Al-Khalili. He set up the professor in a moving chair across the stage with a beam of light moving up and down. He said in 2015, Jim is going to be moved along the stage while moving the clock and he will dim the light so we can see what that looks like from our perspective, stationary relative to Jim. We've placed a head camera on Jim so you can see the clock in exactly the way we pictured it when it was stationary relative to us. But the light beam is bouncing up and down between the, mir the mirrors. But if you look, we've got a little video effect on, on there so you can see the trail of light we see is tracing out a triangular pattern 
across the stage. The experiment then showed how the audience had a different perspective to the light than the professor. Dr. Cox added, but what we see there from the audience perspective was, as Jim moved the light, took a triangular path as it bounced across the stage. Here is what Einstein's suggestion that the speed of light is constant for all observers implies. See, this path is obviously longer than this path, but if we all agree on the speed of light, then uh, it's obvious that I'll make, uh, it must take uh, the light longer for the moving clock than it does for the stationary. Moving clocks run slower, that is true. Time really did pass at a different rate for Jim than it did for you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.